In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the popular form assembly software to process payments, manage them in Salesforce, and more. And we'll answer your questions in the comments and check the description for the steps. My name is Stacy from Chargent, and if you're a Salesforce admin or consultant who wants to learn about payments and be a superstar for your organization, click subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And by the way, we've made a special checklist for you on 10 ways to make Salesforce payments safe, easy, and profitable. So check that link in the comments below. So you might be asking yourself, what is form assembly and why would I use it? Well, FormAssembly is an online form creator. It enables you to host a form on your website where your customers and donors can enter their information, which gets sent to your server to process payments using the power of Chargent. So what do you need to get this rolling for your organization? You'll need a Salesforce account. You'll need to have Chargent set up to process your payments. You'll need to have an active FormAssembly account and you'll need to have set up an existing form. The form will need to contain all of the required fields for processing your payments in Chargent, such as billing and credit card information. Okay, now you're going to need to add your connectors. The connectors are the link between your form assembly form and your Chargent payment processing within Salesforce. They basically act as a bridge between the two systems. To do this, go to formassembly.com and log in. Select the form you want to configure the connectors with. You do this by hovering your mouse over the configure button and selecting connectors. Next, you want to add your first connector and add it to the form submitted section. Click on add connector for form submission and select Salesforce. Next, click that add connector button again, but this time click on charge in. Okay. This is where we configure everything and make the magic happen. With both connectors added to your form, we will walk through configuring each one in order. Let's configure the Salesforce connector first. Go ahead and click the configure button next to the Salesforce connector, then select connect to Salesforce. This will automatically redirect you to the standard Salesforce login page. Enter the credentials of the Actum system administrator of your Salesforce account. Click login and click that allow access button to give form assembly access to your Salesforce. Using the system administrator's credentials will help you to avoid any interruptions later. Now in form assembly, you'll see that your Salesforce access has been configured. We know that sometimes there are changes to your staff, so know that you can always come back later to change the credentials if needed. You might also consider using an integration user for this purpose to ensure the form stays live even if you make staffing changes. Please be aware that if you are using the Chargent Opportunities or Cases packages, there are some additional steps here to follow. You can find a link to our comprehensive documentation linked below. And just like that, your first connector is configured. That wasn't so hard, right? All right, let's jump into configuring the Chargent connector. Go ahead and click on that configure button next to your Chargent connector. You'll notice that configuring this connector looks a little bit different and is broken into six steps. Don't panic, we'll guide you through it. Skip step one and go directly to step two. This is where you'll enter in your gateway ID and choose your payment methods. This ID is the specific gateway record ID in your Salesforce account. If you're unsure where to get that, you can find it by going to your gateway record and copying it from the URL. Enter that ID into the gateway ID field, then select whether you want to accept only credit card payments or if you want to accept e-check. In step three, you're going to do some field mapping. In this section, you will map the credit card fields from your form that you want to be sent to your payment gateway. Each field has a drop-down menu that contains a list of fields available for mapping. These fields are the ones that exist on your form. Just select the appropriate fields required to complete a payment. Step four is mostly the same as step three, but this is for your billing details. For first name, select your first name field. For last name, select your last name field, and so on. Continue this for each of the fields throughout this section. Remember, most gateways will require certain billing information to be passed over in order to successfully process your payments. So be sure to include and map all the needed fields for your corresponding gateway. Hang in there, you're almost done. For step five, you have the option to collect shipping information. This doesn't affect anything with Chargent, but is an option if you want it. Okay, step six. Here you can select whether you want to perform single one-time payments or set up recurring payments. 
If you're only doing one-time payments, select that option and choose your action. This can be an authorization or an immediate charge. If you're doing recurring payments, you will need to set the fields to charge, the payment frequency, and the payment max count. Now click Save. To test your connectors, go to your form. Fill out the information and submit the form. If all the steps were completed, you should get a success message and you'll see a new charge and order and related transaction record in your Salesforce org. And check out this next video where I'll show you how to optimize your Salesforce payments reports using Chargent. My name is Stacy, and at Chargent, we're dedicated to helping Salesforce admins and consultants like you learn about payments and be a superstar for your organization. And remember, we're always here to help. So click on that next video.